Howdy. My name is Nonat, and I've got something very interesting to show you guys. So this is a product I just kind of stumbled upon recently, and I'm really glad I did, and I thought you guys would be interested in seeing it. It's called the Tome of Delving. The Tome of Delving is like a character sheet, but so much more. It keeps track of everything you could possibly want to know. Full descriptions of your feats, calculations on how you got certain ability scores. And the reason I'm covering this on this channel is because they are releasing a Pathfinder 2nd Edition version of the Tome of Delving. So I'm going to crack this baby open, and we're going to take a look at it together, and I'm going to tell you exactly why you need to back and buy the Tome of Delving. So apologies for the slightly awkward camera work. This is my first time trying to do something with this camera angle, but I figured this is the best way to get you an idea of what to expect. Now, going forward, it's worth mentioning this is a prototype. Uh, you'll notice the sort of uh, janky binding, and that's just because he got this together to throw to me as soon as possible. And a huge shout out to Brian Schmidt, owner of DungeonNotebook.com, which is where you can acquire these, for sending this to me. I am super excited, super thankful. He even sent me the finished pro- oh my god. <laughs> he even sent me the finished product, uh, 5th edition one, so after we go through the Pathfinder one, I'll be able to show you guys a little bit more of what to expect from the finished product once this finish is getting back. There's still about a month left on the Kickstarter. It's well over halfway there. And again, you're going to want this thing. Let's crack it open and see what's inside. So like I said, prototype, the inside is going to look a bit nicer. Uh, it will come with these two nice tassels, though. These are two extra built-in bookmarks. So if there's anything you always need, like a druid who needs their wild shape, you can always keep one of these bookmarks on your wild shape, flip right to that page whenever you need it. Incredibly handy. Apologies if it's a little blurry, my camera's fighting me tooth and nail, but here on the first page you can see all of the basics of your character, everything you'd see on a normal character sheet, you know, background, class, ancestry, everything like that, everything all the way down to some more uh, interesting details though, such as just a description of your physical appearance, which is handy to have on hand, uh, catchphrases, likes, dislikes, allies, enemies, and then a full page of backstory, enough to get you your character. If someone looks at this first page, they can see your character. Spots to draw them in here, some banners if they have any, really nice. This I love. Some people might see this as overkill. I see this as perfect. This is for each feat. You can write what the feat is, what level it is, if it has any traits attached to it, and then you can write verbatim the description of your feat. No more, you know, writing it shorthand and then forgetting exactly what it did, and there's plenty of rooms for your feats, so you can add as many as you need. Uh, again, this is designed to carry a character all the way to level 20 in this one journal, so it's great to take along if you have characters that jump around in Pathfinder Society play, or you go to conventions, it's amazing for that. Trying to give you a little bit better look here, this page, one of my favorites, the computations page, tells you exactly how you're getting each number on your character. So here, under the ability scores, you can see everything starts at 10, you can see exactly what you're getting from your ancestry, your background, your class, and then every five levels you get to add, you know, the four ASI increases for hitting those levels. It, each one's a plus two and then your total's right at the end. It's a little hard to see in the crease, but yeah, really nice. You can always remember, oh, how did I get my strength? Why is it that number? Boom, right there. Same goes for your armor class. You have your armor type, AC bonus, dex cap, everything you need here. It's got spots for potency runes, which I love that there's a spot for that, because there's not really a spot on the character sheet for that, the basic Pathfinder 2E character sheet. You just kind of write in item bonus. So it's really cool to mark that down so you remember exactly where you got it. The skills page is a godsend. Every skill shows the appropriate modifier, if you have any item bonuses to it, uh, if you have an armor penalty to it, and a very interesting thing he's done, he's done an, a unique glyph-based proficiency system. So you can see the strange little symbol here uh, denoting proficiency and how it's just a bunch of dotted lines. The way it works, you simply color in the top line if you're trained, expert is the top line and the top half of the diamond, master is the top line and the full diamond, and Legendary is the top line, the full diamond, and the diamond shaded in. Simple as that. If you're not a fan of the T-E-M-L boxes on the classic character sheet, I think you'll love this. It takes up way less space, it's less intrusive on the character sheet, and it's easy enough to read. Uh, my other favorite thing about this skill page is you can see underneath each skill, it shows the relevant actions you can take with it. Recall knowledge, decipher writing, identify magic, learn a spell. It even says, you know, anyone can recall knowledge. But the other three are specifically if you're trained or higher in occultism. So you know exactly what you can do with all of your skills at any time, just with a single look at this page. So the next four pages are the real highlights of this journal. 
Effectively, the next two pages function like a normal character sheet, in that they are everything you need, but easily displayed for when you need them. The investigation pages are for use outside of combat. You know everything you need right on the fly. You have your speed for all of your different forms of movement. You've got your perception, spell DC, your saving throws, pretty much everything you need on a moment's notice outside of combat is here. There's an excellent spot halfway down the page for your saving throws. The example they give is you write the source in, so this dwarven ancestry call on ancient blood gives a plus one versus magic saving throws until the end of this turn. Incredibly helpful, there's plenty of spots for that. Any feats that specifically allow you and aid you in investigation outside of combat, you can write down for quick reference. Your languages, your toolkits, anything like that. Again, all of the skills with all of the relevant actions you can take with them are right over here, sans all the calculations for how you get them. These are just gonna give you the straight scores. Anything you have for lore, anything you're trained with to earn income, uh, as well as a very quick reference for all six of your ability scores right on the bottom of the page. The investigation page, incredibly helpful for just getting everything you need at a moment's notice. In the same vein, the combat page is used for when you're in combat encounters. It gives you every single basic action you can take in combat, as well as the number of actions it takes. You have your entire list of weapon attacks, whether they have property runes, such as a striking rune or a potency rune as well as a completely separate area for alchemical bombs and poisons. Great for that alchemist. Your entire health is kept track of up here, as well as the dying bar, allowing you to keep track of exactly where you are in the dying. Probably just a little, little shade in with a pencil, easy to erase, keep using. Uh, your saving throws, of course, hero points in the corner, and just everything you need for combat. If you're getting any kind of bonus to armor class, you can write it right here. Same bonuses to saving throw section as before, and it's important that it says penalty as well. So if you have anything that's giving you negatives, whether it's a curse or a temporary effect, you can write it in so you don't forget, as well as also your weaknesses, resistances, and immunities. So, you know, if you're a charhide goblin, you can write in, you know, your one half level fire resistance. It's excellent. There's a full section for spells, multiple pages to write down all of your possible spells, what they do. Spaces to circle material, somatic component, as well as the level, action cost, everything you need to know for your spells mid-combat. A very satisfying ammunition counter, including where you're holding the ammunition, whether it's in a quiver, or your backpack, or your pockets, and just nice little bullets to shade in for all however much ammunition you have. It's a really fun way to keep track of it. An excellently compact animal companion page. It has everything you need, all the different... Uh, types of animal companions, their abilities, specialization, support benefits, everything you need on an animal companion right on a single page. And you can even draw a picture of them. The same thing goes for familiars right here, abilities per day and everything related to it. It has a full list of the available master and familiar abilities, which you can unlock by getting higher levels with a familiar class, as well as multiple opportunities for multiple wild shapes. So if you're a druid who will often have multiple wild shapes, there are six different stat blocks you can fill in with wild shape information. I love this equipment page where you don't really write in any information, but especially if you have just some things you have for roleplay, you can add in exactly what your character is wearing, where they're wearing it, everything. It is a wonderful little feature that I kind of wish the regular character sheet had. That's another reason this journal goes above and beyond. Plenty of inventory space specifically for weapons, as well as plenty of space to continue holding things in your massively accruing inventory as an adventurer. Possibly my favorite thing about this journal, in case you ever want to be the party banker, there is a built-in treasure log of opening balances, descriptions, whose account this is. There's multiple different places and multiple different boxes of accounts, so you can have a separate account for everyone in the party, know exactly how much money they've all been given, how much they've spent, how much they owe you. I think it's amazing, and I really love this feature. And if you're like me in mid-campaign, you forget a ton of minor details, this has a built-in place to write in pretty much every detail you could need, whether it be specific NPCs, what they looked like, what their name was, where you met them. Quest log very similar, the name of the quest, if it has a name, a description of what you're doing, who gave it to you, and if you get who that person was, you go back to your NPC log, it should be right there, which is fantastic. And then if something doesn't happen to fit into the rest of all those, uh, there's plenty of spaces for notes. There are countless pages just for additional notes to take. And remember, while the second edition version is currently in development, you should definitely go back it on Kickstarter. 
the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition version is fully complete and ready for purchase. You can get it for about 20 bucks before shipping. Uh, shipping varies depending on where you live, of course. Uh, but here we can see a lot more of what we're going to get in a finished product, a lot more quality of life. Even just the fold-in has a ton of different just basic actions, common equipment, everything like that, even just on the inside. And if you're not a fan of the wrap and you'd rather wrap it with something yourself, it is completely removable. You can wrap a new wrap around it. Otherwise, you can also make your own. Otherwise, it comes in this nice gray binding, very simple. Personally, I just love the inside flap having this nice information. There's going to be a full table of contents so you can see exactly what page everything is on. So if you ever need to look up something specific, you can either use the table of contents or this was in the Pathfinder feet version. Uh, every page has miniature little bookmarks so you can just flip through and you can see they're sort of darkened on the, the side of the page. If you flip to that one, you can see, oh, this one's NPCs. Oh, that one's treasure, etc., etc. Very easy to scan through this thing quickly. I assume the Pathfinder version will have this as well, but the back of the book has a full reference on verbatim, you know, rules for attacking, casting spells, dashing, all the different actions you can take in depth, as well as conditions. Really, a lot of what you'll be looking for at a moment's notice. Think of this as a free DM screen and the back of your character journal. It's incredibly useful. And that's the Tome of Delving, guys. So, final thoughts are, if you're looking to get in depth with your character keep fine track of everything if you are a statistics nerd and feel like taking your character you know especially if you're taking it on multiple campaigns multiple conventions or pathfinder society or for the fifth edition one it's perfect for an adventurer's league character i highly recommend the tome of delving if you're the kind of person who you know they write out the bare minimums they can work on shorthand on the basic character sheet you might not need it but i think it's an incredibly fun idea it's especially the right size and feeling that it's going to fit right in with your rule books you know it's a little smaller, but it, it just fits right at home with the rest of your rule books. It fits right in on your bookshelf. It looks really, really nice from the side. And it's, it's just cool to have this thing that especially once the campaign's over, you can pull this out and look at it and say, this is my character. Oftentimes on character sheets, you'll need to erase, write in new things. Oh, what's kind of cool about the Tome of Delving is there's so much room that even things you would normally have to erase, you can sort of keep in for posterity. You can look back and say, oh, I remember when I had those kobold toes. That was great. Uh, I highly recommend it. Like I said, there will be links in the description to the Kickstarter for the Pathfinder 2e version of the Tome of Delving, as well as a link to the website where you can already purchase the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition version. I really appreciate Brian Schmidt for sending out the free copy of the 5th edition, as well as the prototype for the Pathfinder version, which once it's finished is going to have a lot more things similar to the 5th edition, obviously for the 2nd edition rule set. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys check it out, enjoy it, back it on Kickstarter, and as always, no Nat Ones.